In Arizona, Republicans are the dogs that caught the car, the car being a full abortion ban. And now some of them don't want the car, and some of them do. The result is chaos after Arizona's Supreme Court invalidated a 2022 ban on abortions after 15 weeks, forcing the state to revert back to an 1864-era total ban. So what to do? As former President Trump clearly worries, this could cost him this key state and maybe even the election in 2024. Mr. President, did Arizona go too far? Did Arizona go too far? Yeah, they did, and that'll be straightened out. And as you know, it's all about states' rights. That'll be straightened out. And I'm sure that the governor and everybody else are going to bring it back into reason, and that will be taken care of, I think, very quickly. Trump said that, by the way, from Georgia, a state with a six-week ban, as he wants Arizona to go back to its 15-week ban. That aside, the answer is clear to him and his backers. The answer is Democrats doing him a solid. Trump opposes the law and this ruling, or you can believe Joe's make pretend Donald Trump that doesn't exist. And you know what? Arizona's governor is a Democrat. The state's attorney general is a Democrat. The state legislature is almost evenly divided. If Democrats, you want to get rid of the law, well, you have a chance right now to get rid of it. And I would advise you, get rid of it. They would rather use it as a political tool ahead of November. While Sean Hannity generally operates in a fact-free zone, he is right about one thing there. Arizona's legislature is almost evenly divided in favor of Republicans. And when he proposed that Democrats get rid of the law, he did so disingenuously, and I'm being generous, because a Democrat tried to do just that. Stephanie Stahl Hamilton back in January, and her bill never even got a hearing in committee. But Arizona doesn't need Democrats to save the day. They've got Republicans, and one tried to get moving on a vote to overturn that 1864-era abortion ban yesterday. And six hours before Sean Hannity suggested the Arizona legislature could just make it go poof, a Republican made sure it didn't. All in favor of that motion, vote aye. aye. All opposed, vote no. Ayes have it, so over. Arizona House Rep David Livingston putting the Arizona House into recess until next Wednesday, less than one week before abortion becomes illegal in the state, all but ensuring abortion providers will stop providing abortions. And yet that was the point. That was the car that Trump was chasing when he set up the Supreme Court to guarantee it would allow states to ban abortion. And he said on True Social, quote, I was able to kill Roe v. Wade. He's proven there's a fine line between catching the car and being run over by it. With us now, Republican strategist Rena Shaw and CNN political commentator Paul Begala. Rena, it is interesting. Arizona had a chance. The legislature there had a chance to change what the state Supreme Court had done the day before. It didn't happen. What does that tell you? Well, it tells me that hardline conservatives don't want what Donald Trump seems to want. Donald Trump is saying, we can fix this. It's gone too far in Arizona. Uh, number one, that's a lie. He, what's he going to do? There's nothing he can do. When the legislature speaks, when the, the, the state's highest course speaks, you realize what a problematic situation that Arizona of women are in. 1.6 million women there of reproductive age, that's between the ages of 15 and 49, of which 38% are Hispanic and 40 percent white. Where are these women going to go? We don't really have good empirical evidence to tell us how these women feel about this draconian move now. I mean, this is not only taking women back in time. This is unsafe on every level. And when Democrats message that, the fact that there's no exceptions for fetal abnormalities, uh, rape, incest, you realize what's at play here. And Donald Trump is understanding that, but doesn't know what to do. So like usual, he's going to say something will happen, but it will not. It will go to the people. It will go on a ballot and Republicans will lose. It's way too extreme. Well, what Nancy Mace and Donald Trump have both said, Paul, is it should be up to the states to decide. But Arizona is a state. I mean, it's the state Supreme Court that right. decided there. Texas, where you live, is a state. And that state does not have exceptions for, you know, for rape or incest right now. Alabama's a state. So is can Donald Trump find any success trying to triangulate, to use an old Clinton-ish word for you so you understand it, Paul. Uh, is he going to have any success triangulating there on abortion? 
No, he has he has made such a hash of this. I think Rena makes some very good points. When when we watch, as you say, when we watch the state of Arizona outlaw IVF, when we watch the state of of, of, of uh, Alabama rather outlaw IVF, the state of Arizona go back to an 1864 law. The state of Texas punishes uh, abortion providers with 99 years in prison. After all that, who would say? Hey, let's let the states run things. Let's let the states decide. The, the the states, at least some of them, are are really cracking down. And this is not going to get better for Republicans because it's the real world. It's not just theoretical. This is what I mean. The Journal of the American Medical Association in January released a study in the 14 states that had the strictest abortion laws after Dobbs. 50, 50, 64, 64,565 women became pregnant by rape and were unable to get abortion treatment in their state. 64,565 as of January. Now they just stopped counting in January. Tragically, the rapes didn't stop. So these are real women suffering in real states. And so when you say, gee, we're gonna let the states decide this, I think those women are pretty upset about that. So Rena, Mike Johnson, the, the, the House Speaker, the current House Speaker, the House Speaker today, all, all, all these qualifications are sort of necessary because of how imperiled he seems to be every day, is going to Mar-a-Lago tomorrow. He'll be meeting with Donald Trump there. How much does the Speaker need Donald Trump in order to keep his job? Well, let's uh, look at this rookie Speaker for what he is, somebody who is navigating legislative minefields all the time, currently facing perhaps yet another revolt from the hard right from which he comes, from his own friends. So really only two groups can save him, and, and of which they're not really groups. One group is the Democrats. The other is former President Donald Trump. So he's going to go kiss the ring. Uh, this press conference was was Speaker Johnson's team's idea. And, and I, I don't mind it because, look, uh, Donald Trump has been saying we need GOP unity for a long time. He's almost tried to force that, but this moment demands it. The Republican Party is in peril. It is fractured. It is not where it needs to be. I mean, even with these abortion decisions from the, the Supreme Courts in Arizona and Florida, what you see are even super Republican voters upset. This is not what they want on abortion. They care about Biden's age. They care about the economy. They care about the southern border. And so maybe Johnson and Trump coming together to have a kumbaya moment and Trump saving Johnson is what's needed in order for the country to see things done in the House chamber. Uh, Angela Flores uh, joins us now. She's the president of Planned Parenthood in Arizona. Uh, Angela, uh, what's your reaction to uh, Arizona Republicans blocking that vote uh, to repeal the abortion ban? And what happens next in Arizona? It sounds like it's going to be on the ballot this fall. Yeah, you know, frankly, Jim, Ar Arizona and, and really Planned Parenthood Arizona doesn't have time to think a lot about what happened on the floor of the House yesterday because we're focused on providing care for the patients as long as we possibly can. Right? We, we just don't have the luxury to think about um, whatever, whatever chaos is happening on our legislative floor. And I, I do want to ask about how this is impacting uh, women in your state. But I, to that point that you were just making a few moments ago, there is a video circulating online of some Arizona Republican lawmakers gathering in a prayer circle on the Senate floor on Monday, uh, just a day before the state Supreme Court ruling on abortion. Uh, that group was led by Republican State Senator Anthony Kern. And, the, and some of the folks in this group can be heard uh, speaking in tongues. Uh, let's take a quick listen to that. I mean, I guess, Angela, I, I think I can guess how you're going to uh, respond to this. But, I mean, how do you find common ground on this issue when it appears, I mean, this is a pretty clear example of how polarized things are politically in Arizona. It doesn't, you're not going to get support from uh, folks in that prayer circle there to come to your side on this. No, look, I mean, the prayer circle, I think, showcases just the kind of chaos that we are experiencing um, post this this Supreme Arizona Supreme Court decision, right? Um, that is emblematic 
I think, of the chaos that our patients are experiencing when they're in our health centers, right? They, they need to know that they can receive care and they're confused. There's a lot of chaos. People want to know just how long we're going to be able to provide services. Um, like I said, we are very, very focused on ensuring that Arizonans have access for as long as we are legally able to provide access.